Welcome to America everyone, Sober Oni of G&A Reviews here with a servant spotlight for everyone's favorite alien overlord, Helena. We'll be examining her stats and skills as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 4 star servants. I also have a spotlight up for the other 4 star America servant, Rama, so do check that out right after this. And now on to Helena's stats. Helena has a max HP of 11,882, which is average for a 4 star caster and high when compared to all other 4 star servants overall. Her attack of 8,629 is above average among 4 star casters, but very low overall and even worse when you factor in the 0.9 times caster damage modifier. Taking a look at her skills, Helena's first skill is Mana Tuning Rank C, which increases the party's Noble Phantasm gauge between 10 to 20%. Her second skill is Mahatma Rank A, which grants her 5 crit stars per turn for 5 turns, and also has a chance to increase Noble Phantasm strength by 50% for 1 turn. That chance fluctuates between 60 to 80%, depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Pursuit for the Unknown, which increases the Buster card effectiveness, Arch card effectiveness, and Quick card effectiveness of the entire party for three turns, between 15 to 20%, depending on level. Taking a look at her passives, she has Territory Creation Rank A, which increases Arch card effectiveness by 10%, and Item Construction Rank B, which increases Debuff Success Rate by 8%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, she has a full-on Caster Arts deck with Quick Arts 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 Buster and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Sanat Kumara, which deals heavy damage to all enemies with between a 450 and 750% damage modifier depending on level, and it also decreases their defense, critical hit rate, and debuff resist between 10 to 50% depending on overcharge for 3 turns. This can be upgraded through an interlude which will increase the damage modifier to between 600 to 900% depending on level. Taking a closer look at her cards, we see that her quick card has 6 hits, her arts has 3 hits, her buster has 1 hit, and her extra attack has 3 hits. She has a Noble Phantasm gain rate of 0.45% and a star rate of 10.7%. Overall she does have good Noble Phantasm gain due to 3 arts cards but it's still low compared to the other casters, and she has above average star generating thanks to the 6 hit quick card. Helena is a unique addition to the roster of casters as an offensive support hybrid. For the most part until now, casters have either been purely support, like Hans or Lily, or have been more offensive like Nursery Rhyme and Caster Liz. But Helena provides a surprisingly good blend of both worlds. Her skills are quite strong and make up the core of her support role. Most notably, Pursuit for the Unknown is a powerful buff that applies to all cards for the entire party. The card effectiveness buff will not only increase your party's damage, but also your party's Noble Phantasm gain and star generating, making this skill an absolute game changer that can really bolster your party's strengths for 3 turns. Helena's Mana Tuning is another useful party support skill that charges everyone's Noble Phantasm by 20%. Obviously this is fantastic on any servant, but especially berserkers who come in with a kaleidoscope. 20% noble phantasm charge for the whole party is very strong and can come in handy if you need to hurry and noble phantasm in a pinch. These two skills give Helena a very waver-like style of gameplay, and she very much is a mini waver in 4 star form. Since like Waver, her main priority and use comes from charging your party's Noble Phantasm and buffing their damage. Mahatma also provides a good utility and a buff for Helena, but don't depend on the skill too much because 5 stars per turn is nice, but not a game changer unless paired with 2030, and her Noble Phantasm damage buff, while powerful, is very RNG heavy and not party wide. You should prioritize Pursuit for the Unknown first and foremost because it's your primary support skill and gives you everything you need. Then you should level Mana Tuning for better Noble Phantasm Charge, and finally Mahatma to improve the RNG chance. Helena's Noble Phantasm is what gives her her offensive power. It's a good AoE that can really soften enemies. If you land your Noble Phantasm buff, this Noble Phantasm can also do a decent amount of damage. And it's good to use this as the first Noble Phantasm in a chain because it lowers enemy defense and debuff resist, meaning other Noble Phantasms will hit harder and have a better chance of landing their secondary effects like stuns and charms. All this makes Helena a well-balanced caster that can do well supporting and attacking. However, she does suffer from many issues as well. Firstly, while she does have good damage for a caster, she's still a caster and hits like a wet noodle most of the time when compared to other servants. Having only one buster card doesn't help her case either. A balanced deck with a buster noble phantasm 
would have served her better offensively. And as a support, she isn't as great as you would think either. Mana tuning and Pursuit for the Unknown are very strong skills for sure, but they have long cooldowns, making them far less spammable, and in addition to that, she doesn't offer any defensive support. She doesn't have a heal or defense buff or evade like all major supports should have. Lack of defensive support options makes it a lot harder for her to support more fragile attackers who need it the most, like Berserkers. Rather than support Berserkers or other glass cannons like most casters do, she seems more focused in the niche of buffing those who can already take care of themselves, like Ku, Nero Bride, and as her Bondcraft essence suggests, she works very well as a caster support for other casters. With this in mind, I would advise using Helena alongside other casters like Media, Liz, Waver, Tamamo, Hans, and Nursery Rhyme, as all of them can do a good job of protecting themselves and benefit greatly from Helena's damage buff as well as her Bondcraft Essence which gives a 20% damage bonus against Assassins. Helena also works well as a support to offensive servants that already have some degree of survivability like Okita, Skahawk, Rama, both Neros, Ku, David, Emiya, Shiki, Ushi, and Herc. Outside of Herc, she isn't as good at supporting Berserkers since she can't really protect them, but she is great at setting them up with her Noble Phantasm charge and buff if you swap them in with battle suit. Her Bondcraft Essence is Hidden Goddess, which increases all damage done to assassins by 20% for all allies on the field, and this is a fantastic craft essence for an all caster team when you have to deal with annoying assassin bosses. If you aren't using Helena on an all caster team, then I highly suggest using Formal Craft to greatly improve her damage and Noble Phantasm gain. If you want to spam your Noble Phantasm more often, then Divine Banquet, Little Halloween Devil, and Prisma Cosmos are your best options. And finally, 2030 is another great choice since it synergizes very well with Mahatma and can really help you with supporting crit servants like Rama or Okita. Overall, Helena is a great blend of support and damage in one package. She makes assassin fights much more manageable, has one of the best party-wide buffs in the game, and she can pump out some very nice damage in her own right, at least for a caster. Unfortunately, her lack of any defensive support greatly limits her, as do her long cooldowns, and her damage isn't as good as it could be given her deck. All things considered though, Helena gets a B from me. She strikes a very good balance between support and attacker, just don't expect her to be the best at either of those things. And she also serves a good niche as an anti-assassin caster support. Plus, she's a top tier cutie with cute feet, so there's that too. And those are my thoughts on Helena. If you don't have Nursery Rhyme or if you need a support for a servant with a mismatched deck like Emiya or David, then I do suggest rolling for her. Let me know what you think and what servants you plan to roll for in the comments below. And please check out the Rama Spotlight linked both on screen right now and in the description. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, and I will see you all in the next Spotlight. Silveroni out. Later.